Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here, and I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Meteo Mark's Weather Tropical Edition. Thanks for being here with me. We're going to take a look at the models from the European to the GFS, see if we have any changes in the track. It looks like right around the 13th and the 14th, we progress away from the Caribbean islands. However, the thing to make note of, any shift in track can make a huge difference. So even if you're in the northern Caribbean islands here, please stay tuned. This system is a ver going to become a very large and powerful Category 4 storm, potentially, I think, could cross over into Category 5 territory. Bermuda, the U.S. East Coast, up to Southeast Canada, by about the time of the 15th, 16th, this thing starts to turn north, potentially. We're going to take a look at all the steering factors affecting the system, and just where is this storm going to go? Let's get into it. And here's our Hurricane Lee just spinning right out here in the open Atlantic. Here it is with respect to the U.S. East Coast, Leeward Islands here. Take a look at this. This system really started to look very impressive today. You can see the highest cloud tops right around the center of circulation here. This is looking like a very healthy system. And if we take a side shot here, take a look at how big and high those cloud tops are building up here around the system as this feeder band action is really taking shape here. This is a system that is well ventilated north, south, east, and west. So we're starting with the European model here. This is Hurricane Lee. Yeah, this is things going to be rapidly intensifying over the next couple days. Let's just zoom in here. Here is the Leeward Islands here, the whole chain, and look how dangerously close this system is going to pass. So as we go into the 8th, we go into Friday, into Saturday the 9th, take a look at that. So that's going to be passing just here north here. As you can see, the cone of uncertainty remains to the north. Just stay tuned, though. You know, stranger things have happened with these storms. I'm still expecting it, you know, to have some outer feeder bands potentially affecting Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands here, Le money of the Leeward Islands, essentially. So what's steering this system at this time is a big high-pressure system up here to the north. You can see on the European bottle showing up very readily up here. Off the U.S. East Coast during this time, about the 11th, this is September 11th, we have a trough. Now, that's going to be kicking to the northeast here. So, what's going to happen with this system once we get to about the 12th or the 13th? It's going to start to slow down just a tad. This is where it'll be Category 4, potentially Category 5. Look at that. 145 mile per hour winds gust to 175 miles per hour. That is some big time stuff there. So, that's nothing to mess around with here. Could become a Category 5. Now, this is where it starts to turn a little north. Now, let's see to why this is occurring. As you can see here, this is September 14th. So we have a high-pressure system over Newfoundland up here. We have a trough and then a high-pressure system right over Chicago, Illinois here. So we have another potential system out here that could be a, become a hurricane. Depending on what happens with that as that moves up to the northwest here, that could influence a little bit what happens with our system. So usually these systems start to pull a little bit away on the southwest side. They start pulling inward. So what's going to happen here with our Lee, Hurricane Lee, this could actually help pull Lee maybe a little bit far, far to the east here. That's, that's a stretch, though, because it all depends on where this hurricane or tropical system, tropical storm, whatever it is by this time. So, that is something to potentially look for. If you're in Bermuda, that's something you want to keep an eye on as well because that could mean a more direct hit for you. Look at Hamilton, Bermuda. Here it is. We have this trough setting up off the East Coast by the 14th. Look what starts to happen. So, it's going to start, this hurricane over here, a tropical system, is going to start to influence Lee. And I think on this run, it's drawing it a little bit further to the east you can see what's happening, though, that I'm concerned about here on the European model. This high pressure starts to build in across the Great Lakes and then eventually the East Coast. Now, if this thing starts pushing to the east, what could happen that I'm also worried about is a deflection towards the west here, towards the East Coast. But it all depends on this hurricane or tropical system, whatever it is out here by this point that's being indicated by the European model. But as, if we just run this through, look at this. This is still pretty ominous. As we go from, here's the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. 
that still takes a more left turn those last couple frames up here. So I'm still concerned if this high pressure can build in quick enough, I'm still concerned that potentially it could veer towards the left here, take a hard left turn. However, if this high pressure builds like all across here, then this system might get stuck here for a while or may eventually have to exit towards the northeast. So that's something we need to keep an eye on. It all depends on this hurricane out here as well. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the GFS. So taking a look at the GFS here, after everything said about the European model, here we go. So here is the GFS. Let's get a bird's eye view here. There's the U.S. East Coast, Southeast Canada, up to the north there. So there is the 9th. So as we're getting into the weekend, look what the GFS is doing. You can already see it. It's strengthening Lee even quicker, but more to the eastern envelope of the guidance track here. So with that in mind, look what starts to happen here. Yeah, this system is way over here by then. You see it's a hurricane, but that's also tracking east of guidance on the GFS. Now, GFS does start to wobble it here. Look at that. That is insane. That's a perfect donut shape here by the 12th. This is at 5 p.m. This is pretty close to guidance, actually. So as we head towards the 13th, the 14th, you can see what starts to steer the storm on the GFS. It's pretty apparent. This is an east coast trough. Where is the high pressure system that we saw on the European model? Well, it's 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 kind of void here. So it, the results are going to be much different here on the GFS and I'll show you what I mean here. As we go into the 14th, you can see it starts to get drawn north into this trough. And the great news is here, this is the probably a very optimistic view for the East Coast because look what starts to build in behind it here. You start to see this area of higher pressures building in behind it. So that should help push the system a bit off the coast as well, along with this trough picking up to the northeast. So here it is. We have a lot more questions that we need answered on the European model than we do on the GFS. The GFS is pretty straightforward when it comes to this. You can see, look at that. So there, let's just take our, now granted, this is 252 hours out. A lot can change. I get that. We all get that. But the one thing to note is the GFS has been consistently trending farther east here. So this is something we need to keep an eye on. It's still This solution would still produce a pretty major threat here to coastal areas of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland here. So I still want you to stay tuned. By any stretch of the imagination, this is anybody's game. But the trend here on the GFS is more encouraging with this high pressure building and behind it, no high pressure up here in the Southeast Canada, which would allow the system to exit freely with this trough towards the Northeast. So thanks to Tropical Tidbits here for the mid-layer dry air. It's also going to give us a good idea of the upper level analysis here. But, you know, dry air, that's a concern here. I don't think it's going to be much of a concern. Even though our system here by the September 11th is just north of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Look at this. 936 millibars on the European model. This is a very healthy system as it continues to push towards the north. Look at that. 936 millibars easily, I think, could become a Category 5. Now, look at how it starts to push towards the northeast. There's that system winding up east of it. Not concerned about this system, but could it influence Lee? Look at the surge of tropical moisture. There is our trough here along the east coast. What's going to happen with this? So this changed, you know, from the previous European mo model just slightly, the run. So 967, it's going to be weakening as it heads towards the north here, but the concern is... What happens with our potential tropical system out here to the east? And you can see the high pressure here towards the north. You have a hung up trough here, as I showed you on the European model previously on the overlay graphic. So yeah, this is going to be a big problem. The GFS is much more progressive, kicks the system out, whereas the European doesn't. Dry air, not a concern at this point. And here's the forecast model guidance for intensity. You can see going right up through the center here, Category 4, likely achievable. There are a few that are agreeing with what I'm thinking. I think this thing could briefly become a Category 5. That's through right around hour 84 through 108. So we're going out like three and a half, four, five days here. 
So our sea surface temperature analysis, it is like bath water. Look at that. That You're talking 2 to 5 degrees above average for sea surface temperature for this system to work with. Lee is going to explode with these high sea surface temperature content. Now you see along the East Coast, it's kind of mixed, especially with the upwelling with previous storms. But still, if you take overall, it's above average. So it will hit a little bit of a cool pocket here west of Bermuda if it heads up this way. But for the most part, this system has a lot going for it when it comes to above average bathwater type temperatures. Now, if we take a look at the rest of the tropics here, yeah, we have that Invest 96L system. This is the system that could eventually become our system that helps maybe steer Lee here as you head towards the 12th, the 13th. There it is developing potentially into our next storm. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Now, as we head into the Caribbean, minus Lee here, you're going to continue getting these tropical downpours heading from east to west. So you get some nice rainfall here from the Leeward Islands all the way over to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands here. The Gulf of Mexico looking pretty quiet here. Unusually quiet, especially after our system last week that is good news but there it is you continue into the 13th and 14th you see some cloudiness here we're continuing to get those tropical showers kick out especially in the afternoon helping to cool it off just a little bit there so that is some good news look at some heavier downpours this is towards the 16th the mid mid part of the month here approaching jamaica so as we get into Caribbean rainfall amounts here, you can see across the Cayman Islands, Jamaica through Friday into Saturday, we could see upwards of about uh, anywhere from about 30, 40 millimeters of rainfall. It's getting into about an inch, inch and a half. So you'll pick up some rainfall here, some pretty healthy rainfall. And that continues as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week. We continue to get these tropical showers. Central America going to get quite a bit as well in excess of 90 to 100 millimeters that's more than three and a half four inches of rain and as we take a look here we're looking at how close lee is going to occur to the leeward islands here look at this yeah you're still going to get some outer bands from this anywhere from 40 to 60 millimeters that'll be about two two and a half inches of rain so taking a look at RHRRR future radar i'm going to take a look at anything severe weather related here as we go in throughout the rest of the night it looks pretty benign. We might have some showers and thunder showers around the Ohio Valley, Cleveland, Ohio area up to Buffalo, New York. So, yeah, we could actually have some problems here as we head towards 4 a.m., though. See how this line develops here along this frontal boundary? Yeah, we could see some showers and thunderstorms uh, moving up towards the northeast here. And some of these could pack a punch, you know, damaging wind, large hails. We head towards 10 a.m. There's 1 p.m. on Thursday. So here we go. This is what I'm a little concerned about. So if you're anywhere from parts of the Ohio Valley, especially into the northeast here, definitely got to watch this area developing, you know, as we head towards 4 p.m. on Thursday. Oh, here we go. So here we go. We continue into 6 p.m. on Thursday. Look what really starts to happen here across the Susquehanna River Valley up through the Figure Lakes, parts of the eastern Lake Ontario region. We get some very powerful thunderstorms developing to help break this heat wave. However, I think it's going to come at a cost. Look at this. Towards This is 8 p.m. and then 9 p.m. I-81 corridor on eastward towards the eastern Catskills, Hudson Valley, eastern Pennsylvania. Look at this line just pushing to the east here. Damaging wind, large hail expected as this system pushes towards the northeast. And look at this as we head towards Friday morning. It is starting off with a nice day, but look at by 2 p.m. We're in for another round of potentially strong to severe thunderstorms developing here across parts of the northeast. So please stay tuned. So the total liquid equivalent precipitation here if we take a look in time. Yeah, this is spreading across the east Look at that. So as we head through Friday, Saturday, there it is. Anywhere from three quarters of an inch. Let's just back that up there if it will allow me. There we go. So this is heading through Saturday morning. You can see anywhere from a half to three quarters of an inch here across the Ohio Valley into the northeast. Now as we skip ahead here into late weekend and the next week, look at that. That is a big concern even without Lee. Look what's falling out ahead of it with this trough. That is on the order of two and a half upwards of five to six inches of rain across parts of the northeast. And as we get up and zoom into the northeast here, this is through, here we go, Thursday into Friday, and then we get into Saturday, Sunday. We just continue to pile it up here in upstate New York, Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. As we get into Monday, look at this. 
This is where we're getting into the red shaded areas, two to three inches. And then we're just going to continue throughout Wednesday of next week, Thursday into Friday. We're just going to continue to pile this up. This is of great concern. I will definitely have more on this as we unfold, as we get closer to Lee. This is this is not even related to Lee, though. That is the troubling thing about it. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather. Take a look at my Facebook page at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern to follow the tropics. And if you want to hop over to my Twitter page, it's at Weather Eastern. It's MediaMark.com. Thanks for joining me question or comment down below subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification button so you're alerted when a video comes out